We'll take a look at Doppler shift for radar and beyond using an ENM electromagnetic wave representation. I don't think I can get this all done in one shot, so we'll have a part one which will be non-relativistic standard radar, and part two will be relativistic. Now if you ask a radar engineer, what is the equation for Doppler shift? The radar engineer will tell you it is 2V over lambda. So if you have a radar and it's transmitting a signal, and let's say we have an aircraft out here that we want to see, so the radar transmits some wavelength, we'll call it lambda zero, corresponding to a frequency F zero. And that signal goes out. Let's say the aircraft is moving with velocity V. Signal bounces off the aircraft and comes back. And the question is, what is the received frequency? And that received frequency would actually be the original frequency minus 2V over lambda. That's the frequency that's received. This is the amount of the Doppler shift. This was the original frequency transmitted. If the aircraft is moving away, it's positive, so the received frequency will be less than the original frequency. If the aircraft is moving towards the radar, V will be negative. The received frequency will be then greater than the originally transmitted frequency. Now I asked the radar engineer, ask him how he got this. And he might start talking about pulse length, might be, start talking about chirps, and maybe he'll want to talk about a Fourier transform. I want to show you a relatively easy way to get it. And to get it, we're going to use an electromagnetic wave. We're going to look at the electric field vector, which will be a function of range r and time t, and that will be equal to some value for the electric field, and that will have some sort of dependence on distance, but we're not going to worry about that here. And then it will be an e to the i omega t minus k dot r. plus a phase. Now we'll just, without any loss of generality, we'll just say that this, for completeness, we'll just say that this is polarized in the k direction. Now this k here, that's the propagation constant, it is equal to 2 pi over lambda. And in the vector form, we're going to assume the wave is going in the x direction. So it would be 2 pi over lambda times the unit vector i. This i here is the square root of minus 1. We'll simplify things by taking the real part. And as I said, we're going to be looking in the x direction. So this is the x direction. So we would have our electric field. We'll just write this simply as x. Function of time. Our e0 again. It will have a distance dependence, but we're not worried about that. And then we'll have e to the to the i over 
omega t minus the k dot r now. The r is going to be x i, some x times i. So with the 2 pi over lambda, we'll get 2 pi over lambda times x. plus V. Now, now we'll take the real part. And we can write that as and we'll have cosine of everything that's in here. And the omega is 2 pi F. So we'll have 2 pi and we're transmitting F0, so we're going to keep track of that, so we'll call it F0 times the time minus 2 pi over lambda x plus phi. We can factor out the 2 pi And what we're really interested in is what is in the square brackets. So we're going to let theta equal everything that's in the square brackets. Another thing that we can do here, since lambda, 1 over lambda, is equal to, and I should really carry a lambda zero, but you'll understand it's a lambda zero, and that will be F zero over C. And so we would now have F0 over C here, so we can factor out the F0. So we'll have 2 pi F0 T minus 1 over C. Plus the phase. So that's what we have now for the what we're going to call theta, everything that's in that square brackets. Now you might recall from mechanics that if you have something rotating with theta a function of time, the angular frequency of that rotation, which we call omega, is equal to d theta dt. So let me just write what theta is equal to up here. So we have theta equals two pi F zero times the time minus one over C times X plus this phase. So now we want to do d theta dt, but before we do that, let's say that the airplane is at a distance r from the radar. And it's moving. So r is actually a function of time. So we're going to look at a two-way path now to the target and back. And so if we do that, theta would be equal to 2 pi F0 times the time minus 1 over C. Now, instead of X, we're going to have 2R. 
So here's 2R. Plus the phase again. The phase really won't come into the picture. So this is a two-way case. What we want to do now is find the frequency omega and that is equal to 2 pi f and we'll keep track f0 so or we'll just call it f here so the 2 pi we would write the frequency that we're after to be equal to 1 over 2 pi times the d theta over dt and if we do that the 2 pi will cancel and we have f so we'll have f0 dt over dt minus 2 over c dr dt and there's no time dependence in the theta so the theta the phi goes away, the phi. The phi goes away, the phase. So if we work this out, we would get that the frequency that's received, this frequency here, is going to be equal to the original frequency times 1 minus 2 over C times dr dt. What's the RDT? It's the velocity. The RDT is going to be this velocity. So we get the velocity. And if we want to get into this form here, we just have to remember that if we multiply through, F0 over C will become lambda. zero, lambda zero. So that's the equation for the Doppler shift. This is what we were wanting to find and this is what we found. But that's not exactly the end of the story because this step here, where I use the 2R over C, this is not quite correct. And the reason for that is when the wave hits the aircraft and comes back, it's Doppler shifted a little bit, and then it comes back to the radar. So how can we look at that? The way we can do that is by redoing this section, but instead of having the 2R, we'll just have an R. And if we do that, we can then say that the frequency, we're only going out the distance R to the target. So we can say that the frequency at the target is going to be equal to the original frequency minus 2V, minus V over land because we don't have the two. Because we're good doing the one way. So this is the one way part. And earlier over here we had the two way part. So this is the one way part. So now this is the frequency of the wave at the target. And that's going to come back and for doing this, it's probably best to put it in this other form here. So let me write F for the target as the equivalent way this way. And you'll see why in a minute. And we don't have a 2, so it's V over C. So this is what's coming back from the target. And that's going to be Doppler shifted because the target is moving away. 
or moving towards you depends on what the sign of the velocity is. So what w how would we find the frequency that's going to be received back at the radar? Well, we know the equation for the Doppler shift because we just figured it out. Now instead of being F0, it'll be F target. So we start out with F target coming back and it's going to have the same quantity over here. So if we want to find the frequency at the receiver, all we have to do is take the frequency that we found at the target, put it in here, and work it out. And if we do that, we'll get F0 times 1 minus V over C times 1 minus V over C. And if we work this out, the frequency that we receive at the receiver will be equal to F0 times 1 minus 2V over C plus V squared over C squared. So this is a more correct formula in a non-relativistic case for the actual Doppler shift. But you can see that since C is such a large number compared to any velocity, even any velocity of a satellite, that this term can be ignored. But for completeness, correctness, it is actually there. So we began with a simple example of the problem that we want to take a look at. We have a radar transmitting a frequency, F0. It goes out, bounces off of a moving target, comes back, and we wanted to find that frequency, and we found it. And if you want to, you can convert this into wavelength. So you'd have F0 multiplying through by the F0. We'll have F0 over C, which is 1 over lambda. So we'll get minus 2V over lambda. And if you want to do the last term, 2, we'll have a V squared over uh, lambda times C. And again, this is the familiar part that ra radar engineers will tell you about. So that's the story on getting the Doppler shift in the non-relativistic case. And uh, later we'll move on to part two and we'll look a little bit at the relativistic case.